let me know if I got the basic uh, gist of uh, the attestations of of how we know who wrote what. Um, so around the 4th century, a guy named Eusebius says a guy named Papias, who we have no zero, zero writings of, says a guy named John, who we're not sure who's, who that is exactly, says a guy named Mark, says a guy named Peter, says a guy named Jesus said such and such. Do I basically have that no, right? No, you've gone a few layers beyond what, what it's really saying there. But I'd say that um, Eusebius had before him um, the... Uh, Discourses of Jesus uh, reported by Papias, and Papias, sometime in the late first century, early second century, heard from an associate of one of Jesus' disciples, probably John, the son of Zebedee, but an eyewitness, and heard while that disciple was still alive and preaching that about the authorship of Mark and Matthew. And that's pretty darn good, because that means that Papias heard that sometime in the late first century, within only a few decades of when Matthew and Mark had been written. What we have for Sallust is the earliest guy for his histories is Seneca the Elder, who writes 75 years later. And what we have for his War of Catiline and his War with Jugurtha, which have been preserved in their entirety, is the first guy is Quintilian, who's I agree with you, Michael. more than 135 years later. And Sallust scholars, I agree with you, no Michael, debate that, on whether Sallust wrote this. I agree with you that they're all bad. The evidence we have for the authorship of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John could be a lot better. But what we have is far superior to what we have for Plutarch and Sallust. Um, so, so you can do it all you want to try to call it into question. But when people devote their lives to looking at these issues, like with the classical literature and the biblical literature, we go with where does the evidence point? And the evidence may not be unimpeachable, may not be perfect, but it's pretty, uh, my, it's, uh, it's decent enough. My, Mike, Mike, I, I really want to, do you see where I'm coming from? Can you at least empathize a little bit that if we were talking about anything else, like this flying man, and if I said to you, I, you need to believe in the flying man because it's a fact of history. Now, how do you, and you ask me, Doug, how do you know about the flying man? And I say, well, about three or 400 years after the flying man, a guy says that uh, another guy, 100 years after the flying man, said that one of the uh, followers of the flying man says that uh, this guy wrote about the flying man and saw the flying man. Like, you and I, if not for one second, would say, oh, this is great evidence. <laughs>